Yeah, some goal, wasn't it? And if you didn't have time to check it out during the break, then do so at the end of the show. Matt Hamshaw, Sheffield Wednesday v Watford, about 2002, somewhere thereabouts. An incredible goal. We'll talk to him, the former Sheffield Wednesday player, uh, currently uh, with the academy, head of a, uh, academy coaching at Rotherham United. Jonathan Phillips, the skipper uh, of Sheffield Steelers ice hockey team, is also with us. Uh, we have uh, an amazing man from the world of marathon running uh, not joining me. us shortly. Not, not him. <laughs> Definitely not him, but it should be really uh, at your age at my age yeah maybe yeah. you should be running 150 marathons in 150 days yeah. but instead of which uh, you're just going to go round the block aren't you yeah so we'll probably are James Greg James we're James heading Greg. to Rio on my roundup so maybe that counts the mileage is there definitely but uh, <laughs> I'm, not I'm not troubling it exactly exactly yeah. uh, we'll start off with a brilliant win for the Blades down in Kent last yeah. Sunday they beat Gillingham 2-1 a late Billy Sharp penalty giving the Blades the first away win of the season. They travel to take on League One New Boys AFC Wimbledon on Saturday. Uh, whilst the Owls, they come back into action this weekend, welcoming Wigan Athletic to Hillsborough on their return to the Championship after just one season away. Wednesday, they've not won since the opening day of the season, uh, but they'll be buoyed by the signing of Irby Emanuelson in midweek. Great signing, that one. It's got the fans <laughs> talking and everything, hasn't it, that I, one? I mean, some of the comments he's come out with have got the fans talking. He seems a very interesting character I mean he actually made a point of announcing that he was among the highest paid players at, at the club that he joined the band the elite band of uh, I don't I don't know the exact words but that's uh, yeah. unusual isn't a start it? a stark contrast for uh, Bramall Lane where you know Chris Wilder's trying to get some of the higher paid players out yeah. and you know there he's sort of yeah anyway I, I won't get onto that all right <laughs> um, I might ask Matt about it <laughs> whilst we're on about unusual. whilst we're on about finances we'll talk about uh, Sheffield Eagles another win for them they put in all their off the field uncertainty to one side they smashed Dewsby Rams 62 nil last weekend at home Sheffield Hallam University Sports right. Park uh, the, in action against the Dewsbury Rams, same venue, same time, same place, um, and that's an ultimate game of the season. What a response to Fantastic. the adversity! Terrific. Exactly, yeah. two massive wins against yeah. really good sides, and you know if you can get a win on Sunday, then the final game of the season is against Bradford at their home stadium as well. So that'll be a great finale to the season, and it's surely got to attract some investors. Absolutely, that was what I was going to say. Mm. So you've said it. <laughs> it's got to. It's got to. Yeah. Uh, back to football. Sheffield FC ladies, they lost a close encounter to Everton in a friendly last weekend but they're back in action in the league against Aston Villa away from home on Sunday. Their male counterparts however though, uh, they suffered their third straight defeat, they're now out of the FA Cup a 3-0 loss to Farsley Celtic last weekend put pace to the dreams of reaching the televised rounds, maybe doing a Salford um, in, that, uh, in that competition. They welcome Rugby Town to, well, Football City on Saturday, um, where they will be looking for their first league win. Whilst Ryan Hindley's Hallam FC, um, in contrast to that, uh, they're sitting pretty second in the league, uh, with two away games on the trot now against their draw against Yorkshire Amateur last weekend. This one this weekend is against Nostal Miners Welfare, which Google Maps assures me is just south of Wakefield. Um, <laughs> well said. <laughs> I would have asked you. Yeah, I, I knew know. you would, so that yeah. was it. It's got, it's got yeah. to be said. There's a famous priory there, you know. Oh, is there? Nostal See. Priory, I believe. Anyway. Well, that was that was lost on me. That yeah, was lost yeah. on me, I'm afraid. Uh, Sheffield Tigers Speedway fans, I'm pretty sure that you'll be aware that your team's just got underway uh, in action tonight, away against Ipswich, just getting underway now, follows a loss uh, last weekend to Glasgow. Uh, but away from Sheffield and back to Rio once again, where we wish Paralympic gold medalist James Crisp all the very best of luck uh, defending the titles that he won in London in swimming. Um, and uh, Natasha Adkinson is in action as well. She's a Sheffield girl um, in the equestrian as well. Uh, both the Sheffield superstars. I'll be updating you next week on their progress in Rio in the Paralympics. Uh, yeah. Kel Brook, well, I mean, You've got to be living under a rock if you're, uh, you know, if you or living away from Sheffield if you don't know that he's got a massive fight against Triple G Gennady Golovkin on Saturday at the O2 Arena in London. That's a massive fight. He's fighting 13 pounds above his usual weight division. Uh, Golovkin, he's never been taken uh, beyond uh, 11 rounds, and he stopped 32 of his 35 opponents. So he's well up against it, and I think if he wins it, he'll definitely be the greatest fighter, um, certainly of our generation. And talking of pulling up a shot victory, uh, I'll leave you with Jonathan uh, to talk <laughs> about Sheffield Steelers, because they're back in action, 8-1 uh, loss. There I mentioned it to Red Bull Salzburg, and you've got them again, haven't you? 
Yeah. We do, yeah. Don't remind him. I, I keep rubbing it in. 8-1. I'm so it, sorry. I said to him before, I, you were expected to lose this one as well. This, he said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, I'm well, sure you're... the best policy. Boss, yeah, yeah. It very much is. James, thanks very much. No worries at all. I know no you're hot-footing it to Manchester for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Breakfast, tomorrow. Radio, radio 5 breakfast tomorrow. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, good. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The high life. The high life. Not and quite. You've got to be there for about four in the morning yeah, as well, yeah. so he's off. He's off. <laughs> he's off. Scooting off to read replaced by a, a man who's fit right okay <laughs> somebody who's very fit fit remarkably fit for his age at 75 thanks very much James. No worries, no worries. Um, yeah the goal before we come to more ice hockey the goal okay people will have watched it now um, hopefully against Watford I'm looking forward to seeing it again later because I only remember it from the time what yeah. do you remember of it it was a League Cup game wasn't yeah, it yeah League Cup quarter final against Watford going out in semi-finals to Blackburn who went on to win it but um, in terms of probably my um, Hillsborough career I think that's what everybody uh, remembers me for certainly when I go down. Is that um, I mean it's a great goal but is that frustrating in a way because you put a load of good performances in started as a winger became a midfielder. It, it uh, is frustrating because I just I, I know it's I don't want to sit here and say well I'd this, that, and other, but I had bad injuries at bad times and yeah. uh, it kind of affected certainly my career there. I was lucky in one way to go on and have a career away yes. from Hillsborough um, in, in the lower leagues. Um, yes. Absolutely loved it, but it never kind of gets to the heights of, of obviously when we were playing Championship Premier yeah. League football at Hillsborough. Um, I saw you running some games lower down, Mansfield and, and places, Notts County, yeah. you just run it from the centre of the field, Macclesfield as well. Yeah. Remember, because they got relegated from the league. I'm not sure if it was when you were there. I think yeah. it might have been. Um, thanks for reminding yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the game where you got relegated. It was a home game and you lost it. I forget who you played, but anyway. Yeah, we went on a little bit of a long run and, and we just weren't taking chances and no. one of them things, but yeah, yeah, disappointing. Relegation is a word that doesn't enter the vocabulary of uh, Sheffield Steelers, does it? Despite the high competition, it's just remarkable the standard that's been maintained all these years. But equally remarkable that I think you're now, Jonathan, in, into your 11th year with Steelers? Yeah. Tennis captain? It is, yeah. And uh, yeah, the other club have uh, been nice enough to grant me a, a testimonial this year, so things to look forward to and it's going to be a busy year. Yeah, well, we'll come to the events on your testimonial and if I don't mention it and forget it, make sure you do remember <laughs> it before the end of the programme. But between now and then, let me introduce Ray Matthews. Hello, Ray. Good evening. Good evening. Now then, Ray has been in the studio once before and that was ahead of a little challenge that he, that he decided to undertake on his 75th birthday. He decided that he was going to run 75 marathons in 75 days. And it, those of you who remember our previous conversation remember that I was very concerned for this guy's health and uh, questioned uh, his sanity, among other things. But he's here now, and I've got to tell you that you've run... How many of these 75 have you done now? 69 today. Wow. Completed. Wow. <laughs> 69. And six to go if my maths because my maths is not as good yep, as yours that's right six to go finishing next wednesday next wednesday 4 30 in newman school newman uh, school we're running into the school playgrounds or, or the school grounds um just the climax of it all is just going to be amazing absolutely can you believe you've done it or nearly done it um it's been a it's been part of a, like a way of life now. Um, it, it really has flown by. And I think it's flown by because I've enjoyed, I know that sounds crazy again. <laughs> <laughs> it does. But I've enjoyed every one of them. And what, what's been great about it is meeting new people that have recognised me because of the media attention who have wanted to stop me and have photographs taken and, been giving me money and it's just been yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I've loved it. Well, I'm sure that next Wednesday, you, he's, this guy's going to be, and quite rightly, and if, if, he, if he's not, there's something wrong, he's going to be on national news, national TV, in the national papers, because that's got to be a record, isn't it? A world record. Well, Has anybody of your age ever attempted anything like that? No, before? I don't think so. The, 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 um, the last time I saw anything 
was that the record stood at 15 consecutive marathons. What, by a 75-year-old? Uh, no, a 69-year-old. Right. Um, extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary feat. These two are just sitting out yeah, here. Yeah, unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Yeah. I feel tired just thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've been out, you're fresh as a daisy, you, you've been out today. Yes. You, where, where, where was the route today then? The route today is take me out from, from my home in uh, Maltby mm. down into Rotherham to the gym that um, actually sponsored quite a bit of this um, this apparel that I'm wearing. Yeah. Uh, and then into Rotherham Town Centre to bank some money that everybody keeps giving me. Right, yeah. Uh, and then back home again. Yeah. And on the way, meeting people for selfies, and I'm yeah. getting quite good at this selfie <laughs> game. <laughs> I'm a specialist. <laughs> yeah. Absolute and, uh, celebrity, and, and raising money for this school, a Newman School, special school, SEN school. Yes. In in Rotherham, how much do you aim to raise for it? Uh, well, seventy-five thousand. 75,000, yeah, yeah, round figures, 75, yeah. 75, 75. Yep. Coming back to you before the end of the programme, don't go to sleep. You're entitled to, <laughs> you're entitled to no, I, I, I have an afternoon, I go out for five miles in yeah. the morning, and I have, a, I have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday this season, more difficult than a year ago to get in the top six or not? Um, I, I think it will be because I think there's an expectation now that they're going to finish in the top six and that brings its own, um, but I would expect them to be in the top six um, mm. with the squad and, and players that they've got now. Um, again, it, it's going to be tough. Um, we've just been talking about the money being spent, but your Newcastles, your Aston Villas, your Norwiches, who people aren't even kind of talking about, Brighton's, who obviously Chef Wednesday beat in playoffs, haven't been mentioned, had a cracking start. And you, you look down the division and, you know, anybody can beat anybody on any given day and there's always going to be teams in and around. I mean, we, we you spoke earlier in ice hockey about the levels and, and the amount of football's come on, certainly from when I started to now in terms of athleticism, GPS, you know everything about every player, what they're doing, when they're doing it, how they're doing it, the help that the players get. So everybody's prepared now, everybody's, it, it's remarkable. So it, it's gonna be a really, really tough uh, championship season, I think for all the local teams. Um, yeah. But it, it's just good having the local teams in Darwin. Obviously, it was disappointing for us last week against Barnsley, but having Rotherham Barnsley, Chef Wednesday, it, yeah. it's fantastic for the area. It is, and the championship, it strikes me, the standard keeps going up. The entertainment, the competition, it really is something. Yeah. Oh, about. Better than many Premier League games, well, in for, my view. I think it is, because I think yeah. there's, there's teams going hammer and tongue at it. It's not a case of some Premier League games, you see it's you have it, we have it. We, we know we can't beat you, so we sit off and let you have it a little bit. Whereas I genuinely believe in championship, certainly down at the, the New York Stadium, and teams come and it's just it, oh, it's fantastic it's end to end football at times and really exciting. Um, and I'd agree with you. I just think you know the money being spent in it, the um, the standard and the quality that you're getting now is is very very good. Where, where's your career taking you now? You've got the title, the head of uh, academy coaching, I think, at, uh, at Rotherham. Yeah. That's obviously a great job in the championship. Have you got any desire to be a manager? Uh, quite possibly, but I, I don't kind of look further. Um, I, I think when you're in the game, you, you know, you just see every day as it comes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've really, really enjoyed I've been coaching now for 10, 11 years. So while I've been playing, I've been coaching. Obviously, I mentioned my injury. I kind of made, made me look at other angles and other opportunities. Yeah. And I, and I absolutely love it. I mean, we've had, we've had success. We've got Jerry Yates, who is now obviously coming through. We've got four or five lads who are out on loan playing non-league football, learning the trade, yeah. so hopefully come back. But I suppose from my point of view, our, our job is tougher because we've gone from kind of getting young players into a League Two team to trying to get young players into a championship team yes. against these players who are earning yes. extortionate amounts of money as we, yeah. we've been speaking about. So You're doing the job's, very well the job's difficult, there. but... You know, you keep going and we're getting some really good young players coming through and you keep working with them. And, and that, for me, is, is is the biggest buzz, kind of seeing how these lads have developed. Obviously, yeah. we've had Jerry since he was 13. He, he's made his debut this season. He's come on a few games in the championship. Um, that in itself is, is, is great for me as, as a, uh, a coach, but also the amount of work that's gone in part-time staff and 
you know, the amount of staff and people involved, you know, it, it's fantastic achievement. Yeah. Really. I suppose people, as you say, being in the championship alone is success. I know Tony Stewart looks higher, I and mean, you have to, I think, yeah. in life. But while ever your supporters look and see Barnsley third or fourth and Huddersfield top, yeah. they're going to think, you know, <coughs> they're going to be more demanding of, of, well, well, of Rotherham. We've just, uh, we've just said, yeah, we just said earlier, didn't we, about, about obviously Sheffield winning and success yeah. being kinder expected and. Arguably, that's that's been the case at Rotherham United. You know, we've had League Two promotion, League One promotion, survival for two seasons in Championship, which is a remarkable achievement. But now you want to kind of kick on, and and like you say, it probably doesn't um, help that the local teams are doing well. But <laughs> for you know, now, anyway. for now, yeah. But you know, it's a long, long season, yeah, and indeed. we're only a number of games in it. And yeah. I just think there's always going to be um, twists and turns along the way. But I'm sure that we'll go on a run and. Uh, hopefully kick on up the league. Jonathan, um, Skipper, um, you're gonna, not going to go on forever at uh, Sheffield Steelers or, or play forever, although it seems like you will. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, what are your thoughts? This is, uh, this is where I feel like a, a 15, 16 year old who's just at his GCSEs and I've got to try and decide what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'd like to stay involved within the game this is something you know it's the only real thing I know um, it's a, I come I went straight from school and, and started playing and um, but you know hopefully I got a, a few more years left in me I still feel fit and strong and as quick as I ever have been so there's but it's definitely about, time to think about there's one thing about next. your business as football is it's ruthless and uh, Paul Thompson strikes me as a guy who wouldn't let sentiment get in the way of anything if no, you're not I mean, doing it, you're going to be out. And that's the thing. In, in your can at the end of the day, is a business. <laughs> exactly. It, it, yeah. But it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's true. And I mean, that's, that's the way I've always seen it. So I've always, you know, tried maintaining a, a high kind of fit, fitness level and looked after myself. So, yeah. um, but no, I, 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 I definitely think that that's how they, they live by the rules. And, and mm. you know, you've got to... You've got to take that on board. Mm. Testimonial then, I have remembered. Uh, events. <laughs> yeah, so we got the game um, on the 6th of December, which is a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We've got a dinner on the 5th. Well, who was that against the game? So what, what I'll do, um, I'm flying in some, some of the old, older guys uh, of the last kind of 10 years. Right. Um, and then other guys from around, around the country who were known to the league and who I've you know, got a yeah. connection with. And we'll play the current day Steelers, so I'll right. be playing on. So it's some of the stars of the previous times. Yeah. Some names that Steelers fans know. And you've got a dinner as well. Which yeah, we've got a dinner on the 5th. And, yeah. uh, December, is that? Of December, yeah. yeah. And we're just, uh, we might do, do like a, a roast or something like that. Sounds, sounds a lot, sounds yeah. a plan, sounds doesn't good. it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, bet you're look, good. I bet you're looking forward to your, your next roast dinner, and or have you, I, or do I you have a, a roast dinner? I have a roast day? dinner every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, how, how do you refuel then? I mean, you, you have a big dinner, do you, at night, every, every night when you... Um, the challenge is not changed anything in, in me eating, other than a oh. supplement. Right. And these supplements are in addition to what I've just always taken for granted, great meals. I've, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I know what I'm having next Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. um, and so that's been evaluated, what sort of calorie uh, yeah. level yeah. that I've getting in yeah. normally. And then the, it's the equation of how many calories I'm using per marathon is relatively simple to uh, to work out mm. and so i've had i've had uh, a supplement okay well i've got two supplementary questions just right. finally um does it become just like a normal because you've been running a marathon a day now for 69 days yeah that's like two months and nine mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. is it just a is it almost like just getting up and going to work yeah just the normal thing that's and that's how i've treated it and that's why it, the marathons have not been a chore. Oh. Um, I'm not racing anywhere. Um, I'm going out to enjoy them. Yeah. I've got the backing of some fantastic people, uh, so I've ended up with a team that have that are there for me. 
Yeah. For instance, like I've just come back from the physios, come straight here, and it's all about dealing with niggles. That, that we can see that. Well, that, <laughs> that all that is just to line the knee up because of a, a damaged big toe that happened last Saturday. Um, and, and, and it means I'm just not running yeah. like I normally run, so I'm slightly running out of balance. It's to stop other injuries arising yeah. from the original yeah. injury and yeah. overcompensating. And the final question to you is, um, and you'll get loads more when you complete this, as I'm sure you will. <laughs> when you've done it, next Wednesday, 75 and 75 days, what are you going to do on the next day? Um, next Thursday, what are you going to do then? I really don't know. He's going to be a loose end. Um, unless Maureen kicks me out because I might be under <laughs> your feet then. <laughs> uh, you don't know what he's going to do, but he does when he's having free yeah, tea. Yeah. I know what I'm having for me too. Are you going to have a lion and a big breakfast? Well, I, I, have a, I have a big breakfast every day anyway. <laughs> right, OK. Um, I'm struggling here for questions. Yeah, I know. So, well, are you, how many days are you going to go before you have to set off and run a marathon again? Because it's um, such a way of life. I don't know. A guy that thought of marathons wants shooting. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, obviously I won't stop running. Running, mm. I love running. Um, I'm just going to rest it. I'm just going to put it away for, for a, a while. We're going on holiday. Wow, there you go. That's, um, now you're talking. We've, we've got... A few appointments now with uh, with the media to yeah. take care of. The challenge won't end. No, it, it's, it's end in terms of running, but the the, the getting the money in is yeah. important, and then deciding exactly what we're going to be doing with it. Ray has a, a just giving page. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, um, it is a golden giving site, and it's uh, www dot donate playground. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, oh, if you just Google my name, it, you'll... he's so famous. Just Google Ray Matthews. <laughs> uh, he's at Desert Run on Twitter. Yeah. There's lots of ways that you can back this guy's amazing efforts. And I don't want to tempt fate by congratulating you. Even if you don't do another one, 69 in 69 days is, is worth congratulating you for. And Ray, thanks for Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Goodness me, he's been running marathons all these times and he's still managed to come in. Uh, and, you know, best of luck for next week and next yeah. Wednesday. Best of luck to you guys as well. Jonathan, uh, I hope you have a great testimonial year, but I hope to see you sometime during it. Yeah. I hope it's a great game as well and maybe even a close game against Salzburg uh, this yeah. weekend. Yeah, no, it should be. And Matt, it's been a pleasure to see you as well. Lots of happy memories and obviously some sad memories of, of, of Sheffield Wednesday, but you saw the lot. And you're still in the game, and at the young age of 34, I'm sure you've got a great future Cheers, to look forward to uh, within it. Um, this weekend, there's some big match for action. Do you know, I'm on a run at the moment where I'm always covering Leeds United. I'm doing Leeds for TalkSport uh, against Huddersfield, and I've got Leeds next Tuesday as well. Sheffield Wednesday fans truly will be able to say what they've said for years anyway. That I don't know what I'm talking about when I write about the Owls. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, following us and for watching uh, this show. If you've missed it, it's well worth watching. Uh, do see the repeat at 11 p.m. tonight or check my YouTube channel. It'll be on that. More great guests in a week's time. Hope to see you then. Bye for now. Bye. 13 pounds above his usual weight division. Uh, Golovkin, he's never been taken uh, beyond uh, 11 rounds and he stopped 32 of his 35 opponents. So he's well up against it. And I think if he wins it, he'll definitely be the greatest fighter, uh, certainly of our generation. And talking of pulling up a shot victory, uh, I'll leave you with Jonathan uh, to talk <laughs> about Sheffield Steelers because they're back in action. 8-1 uh, loss. There I mentioned it to Red Bull Salzburg and you've got them again, haven't you? Yeah, we do, yeah. Don't remind him. I, I keep rubbing it in. 8-1. I'm so it, sorry. I said to him before, you were expected to lose this one as well. This, he said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, I'm honestly, sure you're... Honestly, the best policy. Boss, yeah, yeah. It very much is. James, thanks very much. No worries at all. No I know you're hot-footing it to Manchester for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Breakfast, tomorrow. Radio, radio 5 breakfast tomorrow. Please. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, the high life, the high life. N not and, quite. And you've got to be there for about four in the morning yeah, as well, yeah. so he's off. He's off. <laughs> he's off, scooting off to be replaced by a, a man who's fit right okay <laughs> somebody who's very fit fit 
remarkably fit for his age at 75. Thanks very much, James. No worries, no worries. Um, yeah, the goal, before we come to more ice hockey, the goal, OK? People will have watched it now, um, hopefully, against Watford. I'm looking forward to seeing it again later because I only remember it from the time. What do you remember of it? It was a League Cup game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, League Cup quarter-final against Watford. We ended up going out in semi-finals to Blackburn who went on to win it, but... Um including day of the season, uh, but they'll be buoyed by the signing of Irby Emanuelson in midweek. Great signing, that one. It's got the fans <laughs> talking and everything, hasn't it, that it, one? I mean, some of the comments he's come out with have got the fans talking. He seems a very interesting character. I mean, he actually made a point of announcing that he was among the highest-paid players at, at the club, that he joined the, band, the elite band of, uh, I, don't, I don't know the exact words, but that's uh, yeah. unusual, isn't a start, it? A stark contrast for uh, Bramall Lane, where, you know, Chris Wilder's trying to get some of the higher paid players out, yeah. and, you know, there he's sort of, yeah, anyway, I, I won't get onto that. All right. <laughs> um, I might ask Matt about it. <laughs> whilst, we're on about, whilst we're on about finances, yeah. we'll talk about uh, Sheffield Eagles, another win for them. They put in all their off the field uncertainty to one side. They smashed Dewsbury Rams 62 0 last weekend at home. Sheffield Hallam University Sports right. Park. Uh, the, in action against the Dewsbury Rams, same venue, same time, same place, um, and that's an ultimate game of the season. What a response to Fantastic. the adversity! Terrific. Exactly, yeah. two massive wins against yeah. really good sides, and you know if you can get a win on Sunday, then the final game of the season is against Bradford at their home stadium as well. So that'll be a great finale to the season, and it's surely got to attract some investors. Absolutely, that was what I was going to say. Mm. So you've said it. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to. It's got to. Yeah. Uh, back to football. Sheffield FC ladies, they lost a close encounter to Everton in a friendly last weekend but they're back in action in the league against Aston Villa away from home on Sunday. Their male counterparts however though, uh, they suffered their third straight defeat. They're now out of the FA Cup. A 3-0 loss to Farsley Celtic. Yep, some goal, wasn't it? And if you didn't have time to check it out during the break, then do so at the end of the show. Matt Hamshaw, Sheffield Wednesday v Watford, about 2002, somewhere thereabouts. An incredible goal. We'll talk to him, the former Sheffield Wednesday player, uh, currently uh, with the academy, head of a, uh, academy coaching at Rotherham United. Jonathan Phillips, the skipper uh, of Sheffield Steelers ice hockey team, is also with us. Uh, we have uh, an amazing man from the world of marathon running uh, not joining me. us shortly. Not, not him. <laughs> Definitely not him, but it should be really uh, at your age at my you, age yeah maybe yeah. you should be running 150 marathons in 150 days yeah. but instead of which uh, you're just going to go round the block aren't you yeah round so we'll block. probably well, are James Gregg well, James heading to Rio on my roundup so maybe that counts the mileage is there definitely <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm, not I'm not troubling it exactly exactly yeah. uh, we'll start off with a brilliant win for the Blades down in Kent last yeah. Sunday they beat Gillingham 2-1 a late Billy Sharp penalty giving the Blades the first away win of the season. They travel to take on League One new boys AFC Wimbledon on Saturday. Uh, whilst the Owls, they come back into action this weekend, welcoming Wigan Athletic to Hillsborough on their return to the Championship after just one season away. Wednesday, they've not won since the Opatic last weekend put pace to the dreams of reaching the televised rounds, maybe doing a Salford um, in, that, uh, in that competition. They welcome Rugby Town to, well, Football City on Saturday, um, where they will be looking for their first league win. Whilst Ryan Hindley's Hallam FC, um, in contrast to that, uh, they're sitting pretty second in the league, uh, with two away games on the trot now against their draw against Yorkshire Amateur last weekend. This one this weekend is against Nostal Miners Welfare, which Google Maps assures me is just south of Wakefield. Um, <laughs> well said. I would have asked you. Yeah, I, I knew know. you would, so that yeah. was it. It's got, it's got yeah. to be said. There's a famous priory there, you know. Oh, is there? Nostal Priory, I believe. Anyway. Well, that was that was lost on me. That yeah, was lost yeah. on me, I'm afraid. Uh, Sheffield Tigers Speedway fans, I'm pretty sure that you'll be aware that your team's just got underway uh, in action tonight, away against Ipswich, just getting underway now, follows a loss uh, last weekend to Glasgow. Uh, but away from Sheffield and back to Rio once again, where we wish Paralympic gold medalist James Crisp all the very best of luck uh, defending the titles that he won in London in swimming. Um, and uh, Natasha Adkinson is in action as well. She's a Sheffield girl um, in the equestrian as well. Uh, both the Sheffield superstars. I'll be updating you next week on their progress in Rio in the Paralympics. Uh, yeah. Kel Brook, well, I mean, 
you've got to be living under a rock if you're, uh, you know, if you or living away from Sheffield if you don't know that he's got a massive fight against Triple G Gennady Golovkin on Saturday at the O2 Arena in London. That's a massive fight. He's fighting third. In terms of probably my um, Hillsborough career, I think that's what everybody uh, remembers me for. Certainly when I go down. Is that fr I mean, it's a great goal, but is that frustrating in a way? Because you put a load of good performances in, started as a winger, became a midfielder. It, it is frustrating because I just, I, I know it's, I don't want to sit here and say, well, I'd, this, that, and other, but I had bad injuries at bad times and yeah. uh, it kind of affected certainly my career there. I was lucky in one way to go on and have a career away yes. from Hillsborough um, in, in the lower leagues. Um, yes. Absolutely loved it, but it never kind of gets to the heights of, of obviously when we were playing championship Premier yeah. League football at Hillsborough. Um, I saw you running some games lower down, Mansfield and, and places, Notts County, yeah. you just run it from the centre of the field, Macclesfield as well. Yeah. Remember, because they got relegated from the league. I'm not sure if it was when you were there. I think yeah. it might have been. Um, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. That one. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the game where you got relegated. It was a home game and you lost it. I forget who you played, but anyway. Yeah, we went on a little saying. bit of a long run and. and we just weren't taking chances and no. one of them things, but yeah, yeah, disappointing. Relegation is a word that doesn't enter the vocabulary of uh, Sheffield Steelers, does it? Despite the high competition, it's just remarkable the standard that's been maintained all these years. But equally remarkable that I think you're now, Jonathan, in, into your 11th year with Steelers? Yeah. Tennis captain? It is, yeah. And uh, yeah, the club have uh, been nice enough to grant me a, a testimonial this year. so things to look forward to.